All right, good. Welcome, guys. Hope everyone had a nice holiday weekend and uh, took a little time off. And uh, we're going to talk about prospecting. We're going to continue with prospecting. We were talking about it last week and, and prospecting, as we all know, it's, it's, it is the lifeblood of our business. It's everything. And it's, guess what? It's the lifeblood of every business. Um, why do we prospect? Well, let's admit that person. Why do we prospect? Because it allows us to, you know, we talked about there's three ways of, of, of generating business, right? There's waiting for it, there's buying it, and there's going out and earning it, going out and finding it. Waiting for it, my goodness, you could wait a long time. <laughs> that is not a consistent, profitable way to, to grow and scale a business. Buying it, it's expensive and it doesn't always work. So, but going out and earning it, you can do that any time you desire, right? What's proof that prospecting works? Well, Mark doesn't know this, but he was prospecting a couple of weeks ago uh, and found a teardown, and we just got an offer accepted uh, over the weekend, Mark. So congratulations on that. <laughs> That's what prospecting does. This is from cold calling, finding somebody that wants to do something, and then connecting a buyer and a seller together. And uh, it's like when you, when you haven't prospected in the past, you're thinking, is that really going to work? Are you kidding me? Like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to just call people. Right. But when you call, you start in the, there's a hierarchy. Ask client center influence is number one for sale by owners, expired listings, you know, door knocking, open houses. And then you get down to the lower, you know, the lower things, cold calling, door knocking, they all work. They still all work. So let's get on to uh, the point where we left off on prospecting. And if you don't like the word prospecting, we can call it lead generation and if you don't like the word lead generation you can talk you can say it's it's called real estate conversations either way we need to talk to people we need to talk to people um i forgot there's a term for it it's like the last uh, i actually just heard a talk on this over the weekend i can't recall what the term was but it was something like just like the last the last 10 yards you know imagine just getting the ball across the goal line. That last 10 yards is the talking to people. We can do all these things to develop more leads and have these systems and do all this fancy stuff and have you know our brochures and it's talking to people. That is where the rubber meets the road. If we can't talk to people, we don't do any business. Period, end of story. Who's, who's actually sold a house without talking to anyone in the transaction? Just done it. Oh no, it was all online. I just you know got the lead. They pressed a few buttons. I got a commission check. No, this is a people business. We have to talk to people. We have to have those real estate conversations. Fortunately, there's a simplicity to it. It's just getting accustomed to pretty much saying the same things over and over and over again to people. So first point for today, the sooner we memorize and internalize the prospecting scripts through practice and role play, the better chance you'll have of staying on your schedule and having success during prospecting. The sooner we memorize and internalize the prospecting scripts, the lead generation script, the real estate conversation scripts. Guess what? Are you currently using a script in your business? Guess what? You are. We all are. The question is, how good is your script? We tend to say the same things in the same situations over and over and over again. That's just human nature, right? You drive the same way to work every day. You kind of get up at the same time. You have your routine. You know, some people take a shower first and then brush their teeth. Other people, they brush their teeth first and then take a shower. We just have our routines. And in real estate, we have our routines with what we say to people. How good is your routine? How, how, effective are your scripts you're using a script whether you like it or not does it work can it be improved we happen to follow for the most part mike curry scripts right kind of a direct sales very simplistic approach to selling real estate and we really work on memorizing and internalizing them so they don't sound scripted so when mark is on the phone cold calling people they don't feel like he's following a script on them. 
because it's memorized and it's rehearsed and it's totally internalized, it then sounds natural. But because he's using a script, he's able to really keep the conversation succinct, consistent, very direct, very precise. There's an absolute precision to why you're calling, right, Mark? Who you're calling, what are you saying, why are you calling? Like, it's really basic. You're there for a reason. You're not trying to find friends to hang out with. You're trying to feed, find people that have a high level of motivation to buy or sell real estate. You're on mute. It's the same, saying the same thing over and over. Those are the words. And then I noticed there was a turning point. You gave me some coaching last week. Say it this way with this, with this tone. So the word, there's the words and music to the scripts. So I was using the words, but then music was a little bit off that you noticed. And then you said, try, you know, cause switch it up. Yeah. It's not only the words that we use, right? It's the tonality. It's the rate of speech. It's the confidence we have. It's the conviction. You could say the same words and have a totally different result. Hi, this is Mark. I am calling to find out if you have any interest in selling your home, right? It's like, what? Are you reading this? Like, please don't call me again, right? Or, you know, you can be like, hey, this is Mark calling. I'm with the Clapper Group. You know, we represent buyers and sellers here in the community. I just wanted to call you and find out when do you plan on moving? Like, oh, um, we have no plans on moving. Well, that's terrific. How long have you lived at this address? Well, we've been here 10 years. 10 years, no kidding. Where'd you move from 10 years ago? We moved from Miami, Florida. Right? There's a way to have it conversational. And there is the wrong way. So practice, role play, rehearsal, that sort of thing. Next point, which leads right into Practice and role play the most common objections you receive while prospecting. What are the most common objections you receive while you're prospecting? Identify, identify the ones you get the most and spend more time on them. Right? So what are the common objections you get? If you regularly call expired listings, the common objections you get are going to be different than cold calling. If you regularly sit open house, if you were doing an open house every single weekend, that'll be very different from the ejections you get from prospecting for sale by owners. If you are getting regular objections during prospecting, first of all, if you prospect a lot, you get a lot of objections, that's okay. But if you're consistently getting regular objections, write them down, learn the answers, Practice, rehearse, and role play. By the way, when you do role play, when you do role play, for those of you that actually do role play, ask your role play partners to be tough on you because it makes you a better prospector. But always end your role play on a positive note. So when you role play, you can be tough on each other. You know, if you're role playing expired listings, God damn it, all you agents want the same thing. You don't care about me. You just want a listing. You just want to get paid, right? Like be tough on the role play. But always end the role play on a positive No, In other words, set the appointment, right? Perfect, perfect practice makes perfect. Not just practice, but perfect practice. By the way, if you don't, practice a lot, or if you don't role play a lot, don't be afraid to practice your scripts on the person you're talking to on the phone. Practice on live prospects. They don't know you're practicing. Nothing wrong with that either. I don't have role play partners. Therefore, I can't prospect. I can't get after it on the phones. Oh, I don't have time to practice my scripts. And I, you know what? Let me, let me devote the time to practicing. I'll do that for a couple of weeks. Once I get good, then maybe I'll do some role play. And once I get really good, then I'll go live and I'll actually do my prospecting out there. That's like, that'll never happen. Getting ready to get going when the time is right, when things are perfectly aligned. It's like, no, pick up the phone and call someone. Don't be afraid to practice your scripts on the person you're talking to, on an actual prospect. 
they don't know you're practicing. Right? Dylan, you saw that, you know, you're a newer agent. And even though you don't have the perfect scripts and this history of selling all these homes, people still respond favorably to you. So practice on the people. They don't know you're practicing. Back to uh, our points on prospecting. So in many cases, the hardest call that we have to make each day is the first call of the day. It's that first one. It's just getting started, getting going. So to make it easier, call someone you like. Call a current client or a past client or call a center of influence, a family member, a friend, a neighbor. What that'll actually do is it'll start your prospecting session off with some really positive feedback. And what does that do? It boosts your confidence, boosts your mood, and it really gives you the energy to go continue prospecting throughout the session. Next point on prospecting or on lead gen. Next point on lead gen. Always have available your past clients and center of influence list. Always have that available. A list of people that you enjoy calling, that you enjoy talking to. You actually can't talk to these people too much. Some people talk to their past clients and center of influence every, you know, 30 to 60 days. And it's not always, you know, hey, Jim, uh, who do you know that needs to buy or sell real estate in the next 7 to 14 days? It doesn't have to be that at all. It could be, hey, Jim, I was thinking about you. I was just driving through, driving by your neighborhood and, and you popped into my head and I just wanted to give you a call and see how you're doing. That's a great call to make to your past clients and your center of influence. They know you're in real estate. And inevitably, what almost always happens, how are you doing, Aaron? How's the real estate market? Hey, I'm glad you called. I was thinking about this. I had a question about that. So always have available a list of your past clients as area of influence. In our CRM, we have a hashtag and we just click on the hashtag and it pulls up all of our past clients as center of influence. So any, if I have an hour or two extra, I could just pull up that list and start calling the list. Hey, I was thinking about you. How have you been? What's happening? Just staying in touch. Next point on lead generation. Since you're going to be prospecting for the rest of your working life, work daily on your mindset. Prospecting is a major part of your job. Mindset and prospecting, the two are like two sides of a coin. You can't effectively prospect with a poor mindset. And with a great mindset, it doesn't even feel like prospecting. You're just sharing positivity and people respond really favorably because of it. It's really attractive for people. They get drawn to people that have a great mindset and a great skill set. But if you're going to prospect, if you're going to do some lead gen, what are some sources that you can communicate with? Who are you going to call? Who are you going to participate with? Well, these are some of the sources kind of in order. Number one, past clients. It doesn't get much better than calling your past clients. Now, if you're a newer agent, you don't have many past clients. But as you're developing your business, past clients are probably the number one source for you to be communicating with and keeping in touch with. These are people that have done business with you in the past. They know your level of professionalism. They trust you. They appreciate you. So past clients is number one. Number two, center of influence. Family, neighbors, friends. Center of influence haven't necessarily worked with you in the past, but they trust you. They like you. They want to support you. So before going to cold call, 
talk to your past clients, talk to your center of influence. That is the money group right there. These people love supporting you and building your business. Why would you call anybody else first? Now, if you don't have a ton of past clients and you don't have a ton of center of influence, no problem. Call the ones you have. Even if it's, you know, 100 or 50 or 10, who cares? All those people take care of those people. They will reciprocate by sending you business. Really, really important. Next. A little bit exciting. Expired listings. Expired listings are the next group. After past client center of influence, there's expired listings. Now, there aren't a ton of expired listings right now, but it's a great group of people to call if you have the, if you kind of have the mindset that you want to go after expired listings, these are people that were listed with an agent before and in many cases still have the motivation to sell. They just have been let down. So it's a competitive group to prospect, but I've done a ton of business over the years with them. Next group, for sale by owners. Who can you prospect for sale by owners? Different sources out there for for sale by owners. You know, you can subscribe to services, you can go on Zillow, but for sale by owners are people that generally want to sell their home, they just don't want to pay a commission. So all you have to do is prove to them why they may consider paying a commission. Now, they don't always, by the way, don't get that in your head that they never want to pay a commission. I've listed for sale by owners before, listed it for less money than they wanted to get, and at 6% commission. And they were happy. In that case, they were just looking for an agent. <laughs> they didn't know what to do. I don't know any agents. I'll just put it for sale by owner, I guess. See if somebody comes along and buys it. So be very, very careful of preconceived notions and of kind of these limiting beliefs with regard to that. For sale by owners are a fantastic source of business. Again, there's not a ton of them out there, but is it worth spending a few minutes each day, five minutes each day, just doing some quick research, see if there's any new physicals in the area? Always. Next, calling around existing listings and sales. That's an effective way to prospect. To do lead generation. If you have a current listing, if somebody in your office has a current listing, if somebody in your company has a current listing or a sale, call around or door knock around those listings and those sales. Really, really effective way to prospect. Um, Dylan, in fact, was doing that and he was finding people were so, like, so receptive. You say, hey, we just sold this home over on XYZ Street. They're like, yeah, we saw that home. What happened? It's, all of a sudden, there was immediate rapport because of their proximity to that listing or sale. So calling around, door knocking around, listings and sales. Very, very, very effective. Next, just knocking on cold doors or making cold calls. Just going through the neighborhoods. We've done a ton of that in the past and found a ton of business. You know, call the whole darn city, right? You want to prospect the city of Redondo Beach? Get a list, call from top to bottom. Or door knock top to bottom. Just right through every street, every door. Now, these, these are placed in a certain order because it's in the order of effectiveness. You would never spend your entire career doing cold calls or cold doors without calling your past clients and center of influence first, right? That's all, that only makes sense. So these were given to you in a very specific order. As a kind of a schedule, if you wanted to try, try a little daily schedule, you can try calling for sale by owners and expired listings first. You know, maybe you call expired listings at 7.30 in the morning, any new expireds. Eight o'clock, See if there's any for sale by owners that you can call. Nine o'clock, jump on past clients, center of influence. By 11 o'clock, you've had a really 
consistent prospecting session. By 11 o'clock, you do that, you know, five days a week. You're a prospector. You're a prospector. And it almost doesn't matter what happens after 12 noon because you've really done your job at the highest level in the morning time. Next point. You need to make a minimum of 10 to 12 contacts per hour when you prospect. You also need to prospect a minimum of two hours per day, no matter what your goal is for the year. And the reason for that is because if you never get consistent, you never really get good. You never really get in momentum. You can't just prospect once a week or twice a week. You know? You shower every day, you eat every day, right? There's certain things that we just do consistently and it becomes part of our routine. And in running a healthy, profitable business, lead gen, prospecting, part of our routine. Fortunately, you can prospect, you can do some prospecting you really love doing. You know, it's fun talking to your past clients. It's fun talking to your center influence. You know, these are people that you like and they like you. So when you do that, really try to focus on doing it effectively. Really try to focus on making 10 to 12 contacts per hour, two hours a day. That's 25 people you're talking to every day. Now, obviously, if you're calling expired listings, it's going to get lower. You, you find yourself chasing after these phone numbers and getting less contacts per hour. But as a general rule, Keep that in mind. Hold that standard and try and meet that standard every single day. The way that the rule of thumb is essentially is if you're doing a very effective prospecting, the number of transactions per year equals the number of contacts per day. So if you're making 25 contact, quality contacts a day, now, Cold calling is not the same quality as center of influence, right? <laughs> Ask clients, right? So that number gets skewed a little bit. But if you're doing some past clients, some center of influence, some expired listing, some for sale by owners, and then filling in the rest with cold calling, you know, calling around listings and sales, 25 mixed contacts per day equates to 25 transactions per year. If you don't have that many past clients that you can call, if you don't have that many center of influence that you can call, if there's virtually no for sale by owners and there's no expired listings or very few of them in the marketplace, maybe you have to double or triple or quadruple that number to do the same amount of business because you're just now calling around listings and sales, cold calling. But even if it's two, three, or four times as many, my goodness, if you have to make 50 or 75 or 100 contacts a day just cold calling, and you're going to make 25 transactions that year, you know, what is your average commission check? Multiply that by 25. Really cool stuff. Next point. This is so vitally important. Turn off your phone and your computer and don't check your voicemail or email until after your prospecting is complete. If you can really prospect with focus and intent, it's like 10 times more effective. We talked a few minutes ago about mindset and how important mindset is when you're doing your lead generation. My ticket's totally screwed up when your phone is dinging and pinging and notifying you and emails are pulling you off this way and texts are coming in from that way. So try removing that distraction just for a few hours in the morning while you're doing really the most vitally important thing for your business. All those notifications can wait. There's virtually nothing that can't wait till after 12 noon, right? Even clients calling, Aaron, I need to talk to you. Call me back. 
I know a lot of agents and their voicemail, when you call them, their voice message pretty much reads, you know, if I'm not, pay, you know, um, it's something to the effect of, I return calls at 12 noon and, you know, five or 6 p.m. every single day because I'm busy looking for buyers for my listings and listings for my buyers. In other words, I'm prospecting, I'm on the phones. So this is when I return calls. You can expect a return call. There's nothing, I mean, barring like, there's nothing in business, right? If a deal's gonna fall apart, it's gonna fall apart with or without you, you know, answering the phone an hour or two later, in my experience. So don't let yourself get distracted. Most of the next point on that same vein, most of our distractions that come up during prospecting are self-imposed. Clean up your prospecting area to keep your mind clear. Wait a second. Most of my distractions are self-imposed? There's a book called Extreme Ownership. It's a book by a Navy SEAL named Jocko Willink. If you've read that book, you learn how to take extreme ownership. So this point speaks to that. Most of our distractions that come up during prospecting are self-imposed. Let's take full responsibility. If I'm not doing as well as I want to be this year in my business, that's my fault. It's not the market. It's not the clients. It's, it's me. 100% me. No, come on. It can't be 100% you. It's it's. The interest rates are at seven and a half percent. The you know there's less inventory to sell. You have to write three, four, five, ten offers for your buyers to get them accepted because there's low inventory, multiple offers. Hundred percent responsibility. There's power in that. You can do something about that. If it's my responsibility, I can do something about it. If it's the interest rates, I guess I'm just going to have a shitty business until the interest rates come down. I don't accept that. So again, most of our distractions that come up during prospecting are self-imposed. So how seriously are you going to take your approach to building your business? Are you going to take it seriously enough where you're not going to check your email? You're going to turn your phone onto airplane mode. You're not going to check texts. You're not going to jump on social media. You're not going to worry about what's happening in the world, you know, reading the latest news. You know, maybe you close your door, put up a sign, prospecting. Don't bother me. <laughs> Don't talk to me. Come talk to me after 12 noon or 11 a.m. or whatever it is. The more seriously you can really take that time, the better off you do. It's vitally, vitally important. Important. Next point on lead generation. This is a little pro tip. Start prospecting at the same time every single day. And finish at the same time every single day. And if you want to take it to the next level, have an accountability partner. And talk before you start and once you finish. Starting and stopping. Just a very simple scheduling tip that really makes this. Uh, I, you know, I um, I was talking with my coach last week, and I said uh, she just did a triathlon, and I said um, I've been I've been running like jogging. I'm a really slow runner, but I want to be healthy, so I said I'm going to start jogging every day. And then the day of my call, I was like, oh, I didn't run this morning because um, I stayed up too late, so I couldn't get up early. She goes, those are the days you actually just have to run no matter what. Because you're going to hate the way you feel during the day. You'll be so tired. You're like, I don't want to feel that again. And I'm not going to stay up late anymore. In other words, no matter what, my morning schedule doesn't change. I get up and I go run. It doesn't matter how late, how late I go to bed. I'll make sure I get my butt to bed earlier if I have to be tired all day. So the same with prospecting. Start and stop at the same time every single day. 
Like take the guesswork out of it. Every day I show up, nine o'clock, boom, I start. 11 o'clock, I stop. And if you have the ability, if you have an accountability partner, even better. So sometimes, so many times, you'll actually do things for other people that you wouldn't necessarily do for yourself. Right? Let's say Sean and I are accountability partners and we say, okay, we talk about it. We say, all right, nine o'clock, I want to get on the phones and I want to prospect for two hours every single day. So we call each other at 8.55. All right, I'm getting started, Sean. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call expired listings for uh, you know 30 minutes and I'm going to go to my past client center of influence. And he says, great, I'm going to call my past client center of influence and I'm going to move on to you know, circle dialing around a listing or a sale. Awesome. Go get them. I'll talk to you soon. Then at 11 o'clock, we call each other. How'd you do? I might say, you know, I talked to 18 people, got no leads, but had some great conversations. And he says, I talked to 16 people, got one hot lead, super excited. Well done. Talk to you tomorrow. Accountability really makes such a big difference. Because we can get squirrely if it's just us on our own. Very easy to talk ourselves into why we couldn't do something or didn't have time to or didn't need to or didn't want to. But a great accountability partner will hold our feet to the fire. And let's make this the last point of the day. But it's an important point for prospecting, for lead generation. Since we all get bored with prospecting at times. Since we all get bored with prospecting at times, focus on the long-term payoff versus the rejection of the moment. Always have your goals posted in front of you when you prospect. For those that prospect, that do lead gen on a regular basis, it can get boring. It can get totally monotonous. You're saying the same thing again and again and again and again. You're learning to master repetitious boredom. So take some time and focus on the long-term payoff versus the momentary rejection, the momentary boredom. But those people that really can master the repetitious boredom, boredom of doing it day in and day out because they get connected to, this is why I'm doing this. So always have your goals posted, write them down, cut out some pictures, have a dream board, whatever it is, really understand why you're doing what you're doing. Have you ever thought about that? Like, what are your goals? Why do you do this every day? And making a little bit more money doesn't usually cut it. That's not terribly inspirational, but what would you do with the money? What would you buy? What would you like to have? Where would you like to go? What experiences would you like to have? What would you like to invest in? Depending on where you're at in your career, when would you like to retire? How much money do you have to have? What kind of investments do you, do you need to have? And by the way, your goals are not my goals and vice versa. Some of you might want to buy a home or an investment property or a Tesla. Who cares? Whatever it is. Whatever it is. But they should be your goals. No one else's. So let's open up the mics. Um, anybody have any questions, concerns, challenges, comments about either prospecting or lead gen? any aspect of the business that we can share and work on as a group. Mindset, schedule, or is everyone in pretty good shape? All right, yeah, good Aaron, stuff. I, I, I think it's, you hit the point, um, 
consistency is and, and being committed to do it even when you don't feel like doing it is the key to everything and and, and sometimes i have to uh, look at it uh from uh, and apply it to myself too and i think that's the the biggest point yeah all of this lewis you look like you're in witness protection you know when they do those uh, documentaries on the mob guys it's like it's <laughs> yeah. like uh yeah joey cheeks and then yeah. uh you know they so uh, that's right though. It's really, um, and you know, it's doing it when you don't necessarily want to do it or don't feel like doing it. But that, that's just business, my goodness. I mean, think about, um, so Lewis, you have children, right? Yep. Would you ever tell your children that, no, no, listen, kiddo, like if you don't feel like doing something, just don't do it, that's okay. You'll, you'll do great in life if you only do things that you feel like doing when you feel like doing them. And if you don't want to do it, don't do it. You don't have to. Everything will work out just perfectly for you. That's just not how life works. And unfortunately, that's not how, that's a great thing that life doesn't work that way. Because all that means is we have to master and really get good at doing the things that we know are good for us but they don't, we don't necessarily want to do. That's a skill set we can all learn. Like if we really want to get healthy, you know, eat right, exercise. I'm not like a health, I don't know much about health, but I know a little bit, right? You can't stuff your face with garbage and never get any activity and expect to be healthy, right? It's always fun for me to stuff my face with garbage. Like that never gets old. I love that, <laughs> but I'm not going to do it. Because I have goals, right? Yeah. For yeah. the most part, it's always nice to just I'll just I'll just watch Netflix. I'm not going to go for a run, but that doesn't align with with our goals. So yeah, I mean, mastering those things that we know are beneficial. And God, guess what, guys? These are not things that are like. I mean, we're talk. This is what we like. We pick up a telephone. This is our cash machine. What a cool opportunity we have. Can you imagine? I mean, think about how all the ways there are to make a living. And all we have to do is pick up the phone and talk to people. I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. It's just a wonderful opportunity that we all have. You know, we don't, this is not, you know, we're not, we're not going into like coal mines and you know, doing backbreaking labor. Go drive that construction site, you know, on a summer day and watch those guys, you know, putting on a roof, you know, in 90 degree heat, you know, that's hard work, you know, go watch, you know, these landscapers, you know, we were just driving uh, up, up down the coast. And we passed all these fields that were planted and there were people in the fields just like, um, I think there were tomato fields at one point and just like hand picking. I was like, wow, those guys are out in the sun working all day long, like kind of like constantly bending over and like, my goodness, like that's hard work. Imagine doing that 10 hours a day, five days a week, six days a week. And all we got to do is pick up this thing and talk to people and just become good at what we say. Like, okay, let me master these scripts. Like, that's worth it. And guess what? You know, you do this and you make 10 grand a pop or 20 grand a pop or sometimes 50 grand a pop. Like, it's almost not ever. Right? I don't know if you guys have ever had this experience. Sometimes, you know, you, you go to someone's house, you take a listing, you get back in the car and you're driving back to your office. And you stop at a red light somewhere and you look to your right and there's, you know, someone just sitting at a bus stop waiting for a bus. They don't have a car. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, I just signed up a listing where I might make 10 or 20 or $50,000. Like it's a really fortunate business that we find ourselves in. And all we have to do is learn what to say and do it consistently and do it every day. For a couple of hours and practice and role play and work on our mindset. It's a gift. It's a total gift. So 
Thank you guys for a gift, by the way. Thank you for being here. I love the participation and I love uh, seeing you guys every week. So keep crushing it. Have a great week and uh, we'll see you next week. Take good care, guys. Be well.